Hello. Hi, okay, people are coming. <laughs> Hello, oh, hi, Brooke. This is so cool. Oh, I miss you too, Brooke. Karina. Well, I think some more people will start trickling in maybe, but um, the link is in the bio to donate to Rise Up Kids. That's who we're trying to raise money for. So if it's within your means, it'd be really great if you could check that out and share the love. Um, I know it means a lot to the Rise Up family and uh, I'm sure they're all doing what they can right now in Nicaragua. Um, sending them all my love over there too. I'm in New Zealand at the moment, which is why it's a little bit cold down under. Um, and yeah, we're also in lockdown, so just trying to make the most of it with some of these online videos. Uh, it's really cool to see some f familiar names. Um, I've really missed teaching all of you guys. So for those of you that don't know me, I'm Holly. Um, and for those that I've met and taught before, I'm so excited you can be here. Um, all right, so it's gonna be about a 50 minute class today. Uh, should be suitable for all levels, but if you need to modify, then totally do that. Um, if you have a blanket lying around, that can be quite helpful just to sit up on, especially if you have tighter hamstrings, or if you have a yoga block, um, or maybe just like a couple of books or whatever you have lying around your house, and that can just help you to raise the floor up a little higher. Um, yeah, what else? I don't know, just listen to your own body, what you need from today, take breaks whenever you need. Come and go if you need to, I can't see you, but try and be here for 50 minutes um, if you can. All right, let's get started. We're going to get started in Virasana, so sitting on our knees. If it's okay to just sit back on your heels, you can. If you'd like, you can place a block between the ankles, sit back on that, whatever gives you the most height, the most length through your spine. And we're just gonna start seated on our knees. You can bring your hands to rest down to help Preserve your energy. If you wish to receive energy, palms can be facing up. And just close your eyes. Starting to tune your attention inward. Just... And the chin is tucked slightly in toward the chest so that the back of the neck is long. And then just start to tune your attention in toward your breath. So throughout this practice, we want to draw that breath out in length so that we have a long, steady inhale. 
that matches the length of a long, steady exhale. And in a moment, we're going to do some uh, breath control techniques, some pranayama techniques, uh, one of them which is called a three-part breath. So I'll cue you to begin breathing into your low belly, so engaging your diaphragm and then pausing. Then you'll breathe in a little bit more into the upper back and pause. And then you'll breathe a little bit more into the upper chest and pause, and then breathe it all out. So you won't breathe out in between. Uh, but we'll just start with a uh, long steady inhale and exhale it out normally. And a regular exhale. And again, inhale into the low belly and pause. Inhale, expand those back ribs and pause. Inhale, expanding your chest and pause at the top. And then exhale it all out. One regular inhale. And a regular exhale. throughout this practice we want that three-dimensional breath feeling the ribs expand in every direction you notice how you feel after that pranayama technique do you feel a little more calm a little more grounded when you're ready you can gently blink your eyes open focus on a point on the floor in front of you and then gently lift your gaze we're just going to come up and off any props that we're on and sit back on the heels, moving the props to the side, interlace. Center, exhale over to the left. And then inhale, return to centre, release your hands, palms facing each other. Inhale, look up, touch them together. And exhale, bring them down through heart centre. We're just going to interlace the hands behind the back. Start to straighten the arms up and away from you. Inhale, reach your chest up toward the sky, finding a little back bend through the upper back. Maybe gazing up toward the sky as well. And then exhale, chin just comes down to... place it underneath your calves and sit back on that or the block whatever you have lying around but in all of my experience nobody's toes have fallen off yet so see if you can just hold this for a few breaths <clears throat> it's going to help to open up those arches of the feet especially if you wear shoes a lot they bind And wherever you are, just lifting the elbows up and away from your face. Inhale, expanding those back ribs, expanding the diaphragm. And exhale, let it go. Reach your arms out to the side. Take an inhale here 
and exhale, bring the arms forward. This time, left arm comes underneath. We come back into that Garudasana. We're just going to make our way onto our hands and our knees. So we want to set up our foundation nice and strong. Your wrists are right beneath the shoulders, knees are right beneath the hips. Spreading your fingers nice and wide, as wide as you can. We're going to start to inhale, drop the belly, reach your chest through your upper arms and roll the shoulder heads back, finding that cow's breath. On an exhale, hollow out the belly, rounding your spine, let the crown of the head One more, inhale, coming through, feeling all the space between each vertebra. And exhale, hollow and round. All right, then level off back to that neutral spine. This time we're gonna to start to wag the tail. So take an inhale here. On an exhale, left shoulder comes toward left hip and you look out over your left shoulder. So right side of the waist is long, left side of the waist is closing off. Inhale, back through center. Exhale over to the right, looking over your right shoulder. Inhale back through center, exhale over to the left. Inhale back through center, exhale. the hips back a little bit or just start to move around in circles around those hips around those wrists sorry moving your hips around in circles if you'd like we just want to start to open up those wrists if you know that you hyperextend in your joints just give your elbows a little bit of a bend a micro bend and make sure you reverse the direction whatever you're doing Depending on how much time you're spending on your laptop, this is going to feel tighter for some of us than others. It's good to just move out some of that energy. All right, now leveling off back in center. Just flip those palms over now, fingertips still facing backwards, resting on the back of your wrists. Maybe sink the hips back a little bit, stretching out the back side of your forearm. And then backing off, placing your hands down, fingertips facing forward, spread them nice and wide. They're a little further forward than they were in your cat-cow, because we're going to tuck our toes, lift our hips up and back, coming to our first downward facing dog. So in your first down dog, you might want to keep your knees nice and bent, maybe you want to pedal your feet out one at a time. What we were looking for is length through the spine. So it's not about getting those heels down and having a rounded spine. I was back reaching the chest forward, collarbones are broad. Take an inhale here, then exhale, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. From here, we're just going to start to walk the hands back toward the feet one at a time. Bring your feet hips distance and make sure that you have a nice generous bend in your knees as you take hold of the opposing elbows. Just let the head drop, let it hang loose, you can shake it out a few times. And maybe sway the body from side to side as well. Shake the head out, yes and no. Just really ragdoll it out. Release any tension in the lower back. And then pick up all 10 toes, spread them wide and place them back down on the mat. Release your hands down in front of you and start to straighten your legs as you inhale, come up into a flat back. 
Now you might need to bring your hands onto your thighs to keep that length through the spine, that's fine. And on an exhale, fold forward over your straight legs. Inhale, come back up to a flat back. This time, exhale. broadness across the collarbones and the shoulders are sinking down the back. At the same time, try to take some of this curve out of the low back. Lengthen your tailbone down toward your heels. Start to engage your core. And really, maybe close your eyes for a few breaths. Start to notice how you're standing on your own two feet. Are you rooting down evenly through all four corners? And what's happened to that breath that we worked on at the beginning? Maybe look up toward the palms. On an exhale, fold forward over your thighs. Inhale, come into a flat back. Maybe hands come to thighs again. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your hands, step back to a high plank and pause. Take an inhale here. Then on an exhale, lower your knees, pick up your feet and begin to shift your weight forward. Hug your elbows in toward the midline. Come down to a hover. Then lower all the way down onto your belly and place your feet back down on the mat. We're going to bring the hands wide, so wider than the mat, up onto our fingertips, making a tent with the hands. The elbows stuck, stack above the wrists. And on an inhale, start to press into your fingertips, roll your body up off the mat, roll your shoulder heads back and let your head be the last thing to come up. So a wide arm cobra, exhale, rolling down one vertebra at a time, let your head be the last thing that comes down. Inhale, coming back up, and exhale, rolling back down. Inhale, rolling up, and exhale, rolling back down. Two more times, but this time, inhale, rolling up, exhale, drop your right shoulder and your right ear down toward the mat. Inhale, rolling back up, Exhale, drop your left shoulder and left ear down. And actually, let's just do one final. Inhale, come back up. And exhale, rolling back down. Bring your hands alongside your lower ribs. Hug your elbows in. And this time, inhale, press up into an upward facing dog. You can st stick with Cobra if you know that this is too much in your lower back. But if it feels okay for you, the legs are coming up off the mat. So they're super engaged rolling the shoulder heads back, take another inhale here, and then on an exhale, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. So maybe this down dog's feeling a little more open now than your first one, maybe you can just send those heels down evenly, but keep wrapping the outer upper arms down, we want space between the shoulders, and on an inhale, lift your right leg up to hip height, we're going to turn that hip open for a few breaths, so let that left heel come toward your sit bones, knee opens up toward the sky, maybe we draw a few circles with the knee, imagining that we have a marker strapped to the knee, and reversing the direction, just opening up into our hips, and then leveling off the hips, send that leg straight back, take an inhale here. On an exhale, shift forward to plank. We're gonna twist and bring the right knee toward the left upper arm. Feel the core engaged, then inhale, send it back, three-legged dog. Exhale, shift forward, knee to chest, upper back rounding slightly. Inhale, send it back, three-legged dog. Exhale, shift forward, right knee to left upper arm, and then step the right foot to the outside of that right hand. So you might need to shuffle it forward a little bit, that's fine. We're going to lower the left knee down, uncurl the toes. So both our hands are on the inside of that right foot, pressing the right big toe mound down. Try not to let that right knee roll out to the side. 
We're gonna to try to sink the hips nice and low, but at the same time get extension through the spine. So the chest is reaching forward. If you need to, you can come down onto, oh, sorry, if you want to, you can come down onto your forearms or maybe down onto a block to make it a little bit deeper. And we just hold this for a few breaths. And it can be a lot to start working into the hips. We hold a lot of stagnant energy there. So if you need to bring a little movement into the hips, you can make little hip circles, do whatever you gotta do to sit comfortably in this pose. And if you're down on your forearms, inhale, come up onto your hands. We're gonna turn the toes outward as though you're a ballerina, so turn them out to the right. And we're gonna bring our right hand to our right knee, start to twist open to the right, really opening up that right hip and twisting the torso up toward the sky. You can stay here if you wanna layer on. We start to add in the quad stretch, so we bend the left knee, bring the heel of the left foot toward our buttocks and maybe reach back with the right hand and take hold of that right foot. Either stay here, if you want to move even deeper, you can pull that right foot toward the seat, the sit bone, toward the buttocks. And whichever position you're in, really twisting your upper chest toward the sky. Take one more inhale here. On an exhale, release whatever you have. Bring your hands back to the inside of that front foot. We're gonna tuck the back toes and straighten the back leg. Step the right foot back to a plank and just lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. From here, we're just gonna inhale, come forward into an up dog, but keep the toes tucked, roll the chest so that the upper arms roll back and then lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. From here, inhale, lift the left leg up to hip height. Turn it open for a few breaths, maybe drawing some circles with your knee. Big sweeping circles and reverse the direction. And then inhale, send that leg straight back. Exhale, shift forward, bringing that left knee to the right upper arm into a twist. Inhale, send it back, three-legged dog. Exhale, shift forward, knee comes in towards your chest. Inhale, send it back, three-legged dog. Exhale, shift forward, left knee to left upper arm and step that left foot all the way to the outside of that left hand. Lower your right knee down, uncurl your toes. So just make sure that your left knee is stacked right above the ankle and bring both your hands to the inside of your left foot. Find length in your spine and then decide if you want to lower down, you want to come down onto your forearms. But wherever you are, trying to sink those hips low, maybe bringing a little movement into the hips to help you move deeper. And focusing on that steady breath. When we breathe deep into that diaphragm, we help to push our, some of our organs down into the pelvis, creating more space to open up so that when we exhale, we can surrender when that diaphragm contracts, moves away from the pelvis, we have more space to move into. If you're down on your forearms, inhale, come up onto your hands. We're gonna turn those left toes open and bring the left hand to the left knee, start to open the chest out toward the left side. Either stay here working this external rotation, or if you wanna bend that right foot up toward the buttocks bone, maybe reach back with your left hand, twisting the chest up toward the sky. Maybe you can get that heel a little closer in toward your sit bones. Take one more inhale here, low into the belly. On an exhale, slowly unwind, bring both your hands back, turn your toes in, tuck your back toes under, straighten your back leg and step the left foot back lift your hips up and back downward facing dog from here just inhale rolling through to one of those up dogs with your toes tucked and exhale lift the hips up and back downward facing dog we're going to take a couple breaths here maybe take an inhale and on the exhale open your mouth sigh it out <sighs> Take one more inhale, lift the hips up and back. 
On an exhale, big bend in your knees. Look to the front of your mat. Either step or jump between your hands. Inhale, come back into that flat back. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, root down, reach up. And exhale, hands to heart center. All right, now that we've gone through the basics of a sun salutation, we're gonna move through two rounds together. So standing in your Tadasana, your mountain pose, return to that breath. Let's all take an inhale together. Exhale, sigh it out. Blink open your eyes. Inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward over your thigh. Inhale into a flat back. Exhale, plant your hands, step or jump and pause in a high plank. Take an inhale here. Exhale, lower your knees or straight to a chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. So holding your down dog for a few breaths. It's a good opportunity to have your kidneys higher than your heart. In Chinese medicine, the kidneys represent water, the heart represents fire. So when we're going through these times of uncertainty, there's a lot of anxiety coming up for many of us. It's a good way for us to pour water on the fire to calm down the body and the mind. Take one more inhale here, lift the hips up and back and on an exhale, step or jump to the front of your mat. Inhale, flat back, and exhale, fold forward. Inhale, root down, reach up, and exhale, hands to heart center. Last round, meeting in down dog. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward over your thighs. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plant your hands, step or jump, lower to your knees or to a chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. From here, inhale, right leg comes up to hip height, but we don't turn the leg open. Exhale, shift forward, knee to chest. Use your core to step your right foot between your hands. Place your left foot down on a slight angle and pressing into your front heel. Inhale, circle the arms up and over, coming to warrior two. So in your warrior two, make sure that that front knee is not caving in. Keep pressing it open, hugging your right hip in and underneath. Seal through the outer edge of your back foot. Keep that back leg strong and straight. And maybe you can sink the hips down to a right angle. Reach the arms in either direction. And try to tune back into that breath. In every pose in yoga, we have the balance between shtera and sukha, steadiness and ease. Often that ease comes from the breath, helps to keep us present, and takes out some of those vrittis, those monkey, the constant stream of thoughts in our mind, and brings us instead into our body. So take one more inhale here. On an exhale, start to reach through that front arm. We're gonna to come to bring it down onto the front thigh. Reach the left arm up toward the sky. Spin the palm behind us and bring it behind our back, either resting on the lower back or if you can, take hold of the inner thigh for that half bind. Keep pressing your weight into the heel of that front foot. Keep pressing that knee open. But now we're starting to open the chest up toward the sky. That back leg is still super strong and straight. Keep focusing on that breath. You might start to get fatigued in that front leg. That's okay. It's not permanent, it's just temporary. So stick with that breath. On your next inhale, reach that left arm up to the sky. Um, inhale, reverse your warrior, stretch through your side waist, and then exhale, circle your arms up and over, step your right foot back, and maybe lift to down dog or to a chaturanga. 
Inhale, up dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Moving to the left side. Inhale, left leg to hip height. Exhale, shift forward, knee to chest. Step it all the way through. Place your right foot down on a slight angle and pressing in through your front foot. Inhale, circle the arms up and over, warrior two. So checking your foundation, that front knee's not caving in. We're hugging that left outer hip in and underneath us. Seal through the outer edge of that back foot. Maybe you can sink a little bit deeper. Trying to find that ease. You should be able to wriggle your front toes. Soften your shoulders away from your ears. Take one more inhale here. On an exhale, reach through your front arm, bring it to rest on your front thigh. Reach your right arm up toward the sky, spin the palm behind you and bring that hand to rest on the lower back or maybe coming through to that half bind. Wherever you are, start to open your chest out to the right, maybe looking up toward the sky. A few solid breaths here. On your next inhale, reach your right arm up toward the sky. Exhale, press up into warrior two. Flip your front palm and inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, circle your arms up and over. Step your left foot to plank and either move straight to down dog or into a chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. From here, inhale, lift your hips up and back. On an exhale, step or jump to the front of your mat. Inhale, flat back. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, root down, reach up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Now we're gonna step out wide to face the long end of our mat. So you want your feet about as wide as your arm span. So your feet should be falling right beneath where your fingers are. Oh gosh, it's starting to rain. I hope you guys can still hear me through the middle roof. But we want the toes turned in slightly. And I want you to imagine that your pelvis is a bowl and your spine Roll your pelvis over your thigh. Bring your hands down onto the mat in front of you. Or if you need to, you can bring them onto blocks or a chair, whatever you have lying around. We want to try to keep the legs nice, straight, and engaged. If they're on the ground, inhale, come into a flat back. Reach your chest long. And then exhale, fold forward. Start to walk your hands back between your feet. Keep the fingertips facing forward. And just let the head hang. There's a little tuck of the chin in towards which is responsible for resting and digesting takes us out of that fight or flight mode again relieving some of that anxiety everybody take another inhale here exhale side out your And then exhale, start to fold forward, letting those arms come up and over here as much as you can. If you need to, you can hold on to a strap or a t-shirt if it's too much on your shoulders. But we want to rock a little more of the weight to the front of the foot and let the crown of the head hang down again, chin tucking in toward the chest. Everybody take an inhale here. Exhale, sigh it out. Let the arms come up and over here a little bit more. Take one more inhale here. 
Exhale, bring your hands back toward your sacrum and then just release them down to the mat. Inhale, come into a flat back. Exhale, hands to your hips. And inhale, come all the way to standing. Now, either shuffle or jump your feet together. Come back to the front of your mat, standing in Tadasana. One time, let's see if I can look. Palms facing forward, feeling your feet rooting down evenly. On an inhale, sink the hips back. We're going to come into a chair pose, reaching the arms up and overhead, sinking your hips nice and low, palms pressing in toward each other. Take one more inhale here, then exhale, fold forward and straighten your thighs. Inhale, come into a flat back. Exhale, plant your hands, step back to a high lunge with your right foot. So step your right foot back, we're in a high lunge. We want to hug the inner thighs in toward each other and start to reach the arms behind us, come to float over that front leg. Really pressing through that back heel. Keep that back leg nice and engaged. And then inhale, come all the way up into a crescent. So unlike warrior two, this time both of our hips are starting to face toward the front of the room and our inner thighs are squeezing in toward each other. So there's none of that external rotation. On an inhale, look up, touch your palms. Exhale, bring your hands down through heart center. From here, inhale, start to reach the chest forward and twist over to the left. Maybe you can hook your right elbow onto the inner left thigh. Spin your fingertips outward and start to twist your chest open to the left. If you need to, you can drop that back knee down here for a few breaths. With each inhale, finding length through the spine. And with each exhale, twisting a little deeper, especially in that upper back, that thoracic spine, where we can get really rigid. Take one more inhale here. And then exhale, slowly allow yourself to unwind. Just push off that back foot, step it up to the front. Inhale, flat back. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, sink the hips back, coming into a chair pose. And sink the hips a little bit deeper. Take one more inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. And then exhale, fold forward, straighten your legs. From here, inhale into a flat back. Exhale, bend your legs, plant your hands, and this time step your left foot back for a high lunge. Pressing into the heel of your front foot, inhale, come up into that hover, reach your arms behind you. And when you feel stable, you can come all the way up into a crescent. So again, working that left hip forward, pressing that back heel back, and sinking your weight over the heel of your front foot. Inhale, maybe you can look up, touch your palms, and exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, start to pitch forward over that front leg and twist over to the right. Maybe hooking that left elbow to the outer edge of the right leg, spin your fingertips outward. With each inhale, we find length in the spine. With each exhale, twisting a little bit deeper. Take one more inhale here, and then exhale, allow yourself to unwind. This time, just step the right foot back, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. On an inhale, roll your body forward, come into that upward facing dog with the toes tucked. And exhale, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Start to walk your hands back toward your feet one at a time. And then heel toe your feet out as wide as your mat. Sink your hips back. We're coming into Malasana. Your elbows are boxing your knees out to the side. And with an inhale, we get nice and tall through the spine. We're going to tuck the right shoulder on the inside of that right knee, extend the right arm long, 
and on an inhale, reach the left arm up toward the sky. Notice that when we do these twists, we start to block off some of the areas in which we can breathe. So we need to get creative, maybe inhaling into those back ribs or further up into the chest like we practiced at the start of the class. Take one more inhale here. On an exhale, returning to heart center. Take an inhale to sit nice and tall. Then on an exhale, tuck that left shoulder, extend the left arm, and inhale, reach up toward the right. Coming into that twist. We always wanna be twisting from uh, the thoracic spine, that upper spine. It's where we're the most rigid, the least mobile. We want to try to invite a little movement there, invite more breath there. Take one more inhale here, then exhale, return to center. Inhale to sit up nice and tall. And then exhale, just sit your hips back, move any props out of the way. If you've taken my class before, you know that we never skip our day. So coming into Navasana. You can either bend your knees and bring them like so, reach your arms out in front of you, hold the backs of your thighs. If you have a sore lower back, you can bring your hands behind you. Or if you wanna take the full variation, extending your legs out nice and strong. Take an inhale here. Exhale, lower down to a hover, Ardha Navasana. Inhale, come into a flat back. And exhale, lower back down. Inhale, come up. And exhale. Lower, inhale, Navasana, and exhale, lower. Left knee comes in towards your chest, hands behind your head, twisting over to your left. Inhale, come through center, exhale, twist over to your right. Inhale through center, exhale to your left. Inhale through center, exhale to your right. Inhale through center, exhale to the left. Center, right, come back to center. Extend your arms out in front of you and inhale, come up and exhale, let it go. Nice work, everyone. All right, over your crossed legs, come back into a downward facing dog. We are not here for long. We just want to inhale, lift that right leg up behind us, turn the knee open, find that external rotation. And with that, we're gonna exhale, shift forward, Bring the right knee to the right wrist, setting up for pigeon. So we eventually want to get that right shin parallel to the front of the mat. For some of us, we're not going to get there in this lifetime, but working toward that anyway. If you want, you can pad your right outer hip with a blanket. I like to do that. It helps me to line up my shin parallel. Back toe is pointed. Bring your uh, hands nice and wide. Take an inhale, reach your chest up toward the sky, maybe getting a little bit of a back bend. And then exhale, slowly coming down into this resting pigeon. Coming to rest on your forearms, or maybe you can make a pillow with your hands. Or maybe you just stay at the top, wherever you're at. Breathing low into that belly, feeling the ribs expand with each inhale. And maybe you can sink a little deeper with the exhale. On an inhale, come back up onto your um, forearms if you're down further. We're just going to start to walk the forearms over to the right. So we're coming into a twist, stretching out that left side waist. Keep your right forearm down and just reach your left arm long over to the right as much as you can. Feel that stretch through the left side waist. Take one more inhale here. Feel it through the side waist and then exhale, walk your hands back to center. Come to sit up nice and tall. Come into that little back bend once more. Roll the shoulder heads back. Reach your chest up toward the sky. 
and then roll over onto your right hip bring the left leg forward if you're using a blanket you can stay sitting up on that blanket keeping that right knee tucked we're bringing the left foot over top so the left foot's going to be placed down on the right the right foot's tucked in toward the left sit bone bring our left hands behind lift left fingertips behind you inhale reach the right arm up to the sky and exhale twist over to the left maybe hooking the elbow onto that left knee or wrapping the leg inhale to sit up nice and tall and exhale to twist a little bit deeper take one more inhale here then exhale look toward the front of the room allow your body to unwind we're just going to straighten that right leg out in front of us now and maybe you can tuck that left foot that left heel in by your right hip from here inhale reach the arms up to the sky and exhale start to fold forward maybe you can take hold of the foot or the shin or maybe just rest your hands alongside you you should feel this really deep through the back of the right leg take one more inhale here find length in the spine and exhale maybe you can sink a little bit deeper on your next inhale come to sit up nice and tall final pose on the side if it's in your practice can you tuck your right heel in by your left sit bone if not you can just take simple cross-legged with the left shin in front of the right if you can take this double Gomukhasana, knees are stacked on top of each other. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. And then exhale, start to fold forward. Let the head be heavy. If you inhale, roll through to one of those up dogs, a nice neutral pose. And exhale, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg up to hip height, turn it open, find that external rotation. Hold on to that as you exhale. front foot inhale here find a nice long spine and then exhale start to walk forward come into this resting pigeon you can always bring your head down onto a block as well it can just be nice to release that tension in the neck always exploring if there's somewhere that you're holding on to tension especially with Take one more inhale here. Then on an exhale, start to walk your hands back toward each other. Back to the center. As you press into your hands, come to sit up nice and tall. Maybe even a slight back bend as you look up toward the sky. Take an inhale here. Then exhale, roll over onto your left hip. Bring your right leg forward.
left behind the knee. Take an inhale to find nice length. And then exhale, twist a little deeper. Trying to find that twist in the upper back, thoracic spine. Move through some of that stagnant energy. Take one more inhale here. Then exhale, look toward the front and allow your body to unwind. Extend the left leg straight in front and we're going to stack the right knee on top of the left knee. From here, inhale, reach the arms up to the sky. Exhale. Trying to tuck that uh, left ankle in by the right hip, or if it's not within your practice, then just crossing the right shin in front of the left. If you can, take that Gomukhasana. Inhale to sit up nice and tall, and then exhale, fold forward for a few breaths. You should feel this really deep. to the thigh action can also be really soothing for the body and mind. On an inhale come to sit up nice and tall. This time we're just going to extend the legs out in front of us, gives them a little bit of a shape, move any props out of the way and we're just going to roll down onto our back, bringing the heels close and toward the sit bones. You should be able to touch your heels with your hands. Take one more inhale here, feel your front body expand. On an exhale, rolling down one vertebra at a time. Let your hips, your tailbone be the last thing to touch. And then bring your feet as wide as your mat, just drop both your knees to the left and then windmill them over to the right. And to the left and to the right. On the exhale, release your hands, start to roll down one vertebra at a time. Letting your tailbone be the last thing to touch. Bring your feet as wide as the mat. Just windmill the knees out, releasing any tension in the low back, neutralizing the pelvis. Before bringing the knees to center, hugging them in toward your chest.
straighten one foot and bend the other, so straighten one leg and bend the other, whatever feels good to you to close off your practice. Arms alongside you, palms facing the ceiling. Let the soles of your feet relax. Everybody take a deep inhale here. Fill yourself all the way up to the top and pause. Maybe you can sip in a little more breath and then exhale, sigh it out the mouth. Let go of any last tension and enjoy just a few moments of Shavasana. And as you lie here, I want you to imagine that there's somebody sitting at your head, somebody you love and trust a lot. And they're holding in their hand a vessel. And the vessel is filled with the most perfect temperature of water. And as you lie here in your Shavasana, they start to pour it over your head and you feel it running down your body, over your shoulders, that perfect temperature enveloping you, calming you, soothing you, over the chest, over your arms, your belly, your hips and thighs, and over your toes. And again, they fill up their vessel Pouring it over your head, you feel it run over your ears, your shoulders, your torso and hips, down your legs and over the soles of your feet, leaving you feeling completely relaxed, completely at ease. start to bring your attention back to the room. Just bringing a little movement to your fingers and toes. Noticing how your body feels after this practice, after this relaxation. You can reach your arms up and overhead, stretching through the front of your body, point your toes away from you, take a deep breath here. Bring the soles of your feet to the mat and roll over onto the right side. And very gently using your left hand, press yourself up to a seat. Come to any Amazing practice and this technology that connects us all from different parts of the world. So with your heart lifted, we can bow our heads, sealing in the gratitude, and then gently lift our head and open our eyes. Namaste. Thank you all for joining. It's been an absolute pleasure. Miss you all. Um, and again, if you would like to donate to Rise Up Kids, the link is in the bio uh, on the Rise Up Instagram page.